What up? This is Ramash Queen covering movies, TV, and entertainment, and here's my review of Netflix new movie, Troll. Hey, before you watch my review, please subscribe to my channel, press that like button, ring that bell, so you can get notified whenever I post new videos. Let's rock this. Alrighty, here comes Norwegian Kaiju Extravaganza! If Hollywood has King Kong and Japan has Godzilla, Norway has Troll. But to be fair, not all trolls are gigantic. They come in various shapes and sizes, and their stories have been adapted through different genres, including that old horror franchise, remember that one? And all the way to that cutesy, wholesome animated movie. But this one, however, is more akin to that 2010 found footage film, Troll Hunter, of which I was a huge fan. So just like that one, this new troll is also massive and colossal. And to put it simply, this is kind of like the Norwegian answer to Pacific Rim, if you will, minus the Jaegers. But overall verdict, do I enjoy this new troll? Well, I'm leaning more towards yes. Because even though the story is formulaic, it's also really clear that the filmmakers paid attention to or did a good job of observing how Hollywood generally structures monster movies, including knowing how to make the human dramas go hand in hand with the big action set pieces. Written by Espen Aukan and directed by Roar Uthog, in Troll, deep inside the mountain of Dover, something gigantic awakens after being trapped for a thousand years, destroying everything in its path. The creature is fast approaching the capital of Norway, but how do you stop something you thought only existed in Norwegian folklore? Starring Ayn Marie Willman, Kim Falk, Mats Sjogard Peterson, and Gerd Edsvold. Boy, I sure hope I pronounce all those names correctly. My bad if I didn't. Now, if the director sounds familiar to you, it's because he's the same guy who gave you that 2018 Tomb Raider. In fact, he had not made a single movie since then until Troll. But you know what? It's nice that he can do a project like this that's close to home. Paying respects to his birthplace before he goes back to Hollywood, whenever that will be. Having said that, director Roar Uthog plays it pretty basic for Troll. The build-up, the suspense, the chases, the destructions, the reveals. He borrows a little bit from Jurassic Park. He borrows a little bit from Roland Emmerich. And it works. Just as I said earlier, Troll sees every other monster movie ever made and then puts its own spin to it. And if you don't like that, that's fine. That's your prerogative. But let's face it, there's only so much you can do with this genre, almost all of which has been done. Of course you'll have the military elements. Of course you'll have a few scientists who will butt heads with them. And of course you'll have a trigger-happy douchebag who just wants to nuke everything. So all the boxes are checked, and what's left is, can you apply that to Norwegian folklore? And that's exactly what this movie executes, quite well I might add. Now, the character design for the troll is rough. I mean, I get it, that is after all what they were going for, seeing that he is supposedly made of rock and stones. I do however like the fact that he has a tiny bit of personality. That said, the way the CG blends him with his human surroundings could have been more seamless. You know, you could still tell where one ends and the other begins, that sort of a thing. But I'm not gonna be too harsh because for this type of film that goes straight to Netflix and not the big screen, it does just about what could be done for this format. The actors' performances are at times cheesy and other times genuine. The father-daughter drama is sufficient enough to emphasize the importance of believing in the impossible, even as a grown-up. Troll can get dark and scary, yet adventurous. It's mostly a crowd-pleasing romp through the terrains of Norway, a popcorn, entertaining Nordic kaiju movie for your Saturday night.